When Antonio Sustiel came to the United States 32 years ago, he had $400 to his name. From there, he's built a multi-location, $150 million flooring empire, working with superstar celebrities and being featured on CNBC and People, amongst many. We sell close to 4,000 containers of flooring a year worldwide, which wow. is more material than Home Depot and Lowe's combined. So to start a business, I will start where it's free. Later on, I will start spending money. That's my secret. That's the latest trends, that's the latest fashion, and that's how we make money today. Today, we'll find out how he did it and how he plans to grow in this interview. Guys, I am in Miami, Florida with Antonio Sustiel, who is known as the Flooring King. He's been seen collaborating with many famous celebrities and is now the household name. So Antonio, thank you for joining us on Upflip. Can't wait to share your story and thank inspire you for many having me viewers. on your show. Thank you so much. It is our pleasure. Thank you. Let's start with your story, your background, how you got into the flooring business, and anything else you want to shy highlight on that. I landed in the United States almost 30 years ago from Israel. Okay. I just finished the military. I was in the Israeli military for close to six years. After I got released, I hopped on a plane. I came to Miami. I have family that lives in Miami, so I came to visit. I landed here with $400 in my pocket. I started working at the flea market. I worked from 4.30 in the morning till six o'clock at night, seven days a week. Start building $50 at the time, building confidence, building a little language. From there on, I start building uh, enough funds to start building and buying more and more perfumes, which is my first business. Got it. I wow. did perfumes for many, many years. I wow, sold okay. my business for three and a half million dollars. But before I ventured to another business, I retired. Mm -hmm. So when I was in my 30s, I stopped working. You thought you're done at well, three and a half million. Well, I'm a trillionaire. I have three million dollars in my pocket. I'm buying cars, I'm buying houses, I'm traveling the world. And I thought it's never gonna finish. Obviously, three years later, the money was gone and I started uh -oh. working again. A friend of a friend told me about flooring. They said they have a few containers of flooring. I didn't really know what to do with flooring, but I bought it anyway. I had a few customers in South America. And from there on, I saw that the flooring business is such a huge business That's and people has so much demand for it. Mm -hmm. That's where all of a sudden it's like, this is where I want to be. That's mm -hmm. what I want to do. This is my future. I'm going to put together a plan how to succeed. And the rest is history. In sales, we deal with objections all the time. Real estate, flooring, cars, whatever it is in the flooring industry. What are some common objections that you deal with from small clients to million, million dollars worth of flooring business? It's a good question because most of the people that come over here come from Home Depot, they come from Lowe's, they come mm -hmm. from the big box, what they call, and they come already set with prices, with samples, with knowledge. When they come to us, we literally wipe all this out by a few things. Number one is the price. We give people 50% discount on all their flooring needs nationwide, actually worldwide. So right there and there, people on a budget start thinking price and they know for a fact that this is a place to shop. Second is variety. The amount of colors that we're selling, we basically display for people, is triple the amount that Home Depot, Lowe's, and all the rest of the competitors Combined together, mm -hmm. we sell close to 4,000 containers of flooring a year worldwide, which wow. is more material than Home Depot and Lowe's combined worldwide on a yearly basis. So the volume we do, the price we give, the authenticity, the customer service, this is why we are different than anybody else. So we pretty much send them home with all the knowledge they need, and we send them home with their such a big discount that they can really refuse the deal. Well, how are you able to do a 50% Discount from a Home Depot price point. Buying power. So what I do for the past one year is we buy more containers of flooring than any other dealer worldwide because of our buying power and the knowledge that I have and I quite that's my secret. You have a pretty cool office uh, to start with. It's its walls are thank you. Your flooring. Full of flooring, yes. <laughs> Full of flooring. Yes. I want to ask you about your revenue across the entire Flooring King enterprise, right? What is the revenue on average per month and an what profit month, margins do you shoot for? Just an average the month for Flooring King is about a million and a half dollars. And uh, a that's a month. We do a million and a half dollars. We're shooting towards the $2 million uh, range right now. Mm -hmm. And margin profit is almost 100%. So yes. we're making almost wow. half of that as profit. Of course, because of the buying power. Typically, it's not, the, it's not the case in the flooring industry, but because of my buying power, because I buy really inexpensive, sell it super high, still giving the value and discounts to customers. So we're making close to seven to eight hundred thousand dollars a month profit. Let's talk about the initial investment to Flooring King 20 years ago. Somebody watching here just wants to know, hey, how much did you invest to get started? And how was that broken down? Was it, was it leasing space? 
Was it buying inventory? It was. It was. So the was beginning, the at the beginning, we had a little bit of an issue with space. We didn't have a warehouse because we didn't know how big the business is going to get. Mm -hmm. I invested a hundred thousand dollars about twenty years ago, which is the money I saved from the perfume sales that I did. Right. We bought some containers, and once the business started to grow, I started buying smaller warehouses until we got to a point that we had no more room to store all this material. Mm. So necessity brought us to buy this warehouse. We had to buy the warehouse, otherwise we would never grow. Would I spend the 50 majority of it on buying inventory? Would that be yes. the key? Yes, I will say inventory is the most important thing because the warehouse you can always rent for a couple thousand dollars, mm -hmm. but I will say the inventory is what's going to give you growth. So I will spend all my money on inventory, very little money on rent, let the business grow, mm -hmm. and at some point, Take that money that you're making and then you can buy a piece of real estate. But at the beginning, the most important thing and the critical thing is to grow your investment from the initial investment. How do I keep costs as low as possible in the flooring business? Obviously, you're probably gonna say buying power, number one, right? But I'm not as big as you. I'm running a shop out of Bellingham, Washington. What are the tricks and tips can you share with us? There's a lot of tricks, actually. I will say, first of all, your rents. If you have a store, if you're renting a store or a showroom or warehouse, the most important thing is to have low rent. Mm -hmm. Never go for the best location on the ne or next to the highway, next to the visible location. Remember, today... I'm surprised you say that. Everybody have their iPhones and everybody that comes to your location just literally punch your name into the phone, Siri will take you straight to the location. So you don't really have to be in the main street at the main location with the most visible store. Hmm. You can be in the back street instead of spending $9,000, oh. you can spend $2,000 being a warehouse on the back. Because remember, your customer is going to Google where you are and they're going to get to you automatically. Flooring is a necessity. When people come to you, it's because they need it. They need it, yeah. Not because they're all of a sudden decided to spend $4,000. If you have the right product with the right value and the right price and the right customer service, they will find you and then they'll come to you. Why spending the money? So right there and there, instead of $9,000, you are spending $2,000, you're saving $80,000, $90,000 a year before you even start the business. That's my suggestion. Anything else? I want more of that. Definitely. Um, uh, hire the right people, promise them commission, but don't give them the whole salary in advance. Give them a good pay with a lot of incentives. Let them go to work. Let them make money for themselves. Let them make money for you. So that's a big saving. Now, as far as advertising, find out where you want to advertise. Do you want to advertise on Google and spend a lot, a lot of thousands of dollars every month? Or you can do social media. So to start a business, I will start where it's free. Later on, I will start spending money. Awesome. Thank you for those tips. Of course. How many locations do you have right now for uh, stores? And where are they, just to get an We idea. have nine locations right now in Florida, all the way from the Florida Keys, all the way to Orlando. But in the blueprint, we have 350 stores nationwide. And we're also talking to Canada and Europe, perhaps another 350 stores, which is the largest flooring company in the world. Thinking big. What about uh, warehouses? Is this the only one as far as distribution center? No. What do you got? We have six warehouses worldwide, and we have five of them in the US and one in Switzerland. Wow, we have gotcha. them in Texas. We have them in California. We have them in Florida, we have them in Seattle, Washington, okay. and we have them in Alabama. So uh, we have a few distribution centers that we sell flooring to dealers nationwide, and we're looking to do more warehouses in Europe as well, so we can basically supply flooring worldwide. So you sell a ton of variety of flooring, right? Let's talk about the types that you want to highlight and what are the most profitable, least profitable, just to kind of understand the flooring as a whole. We sell tile, hardwood, laminate flooring, vinyl flooring, and we sell all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The most profitable item today is laminate flooring and vinyl flooring. Vinyl flooring is 100% waterproof. We live in Florida. There's a lot of hurricanes. Yeah. People are really concerned about water over Moisture here. Moisture as well. Moisture and everything's on the water over here. So there's a lot of issues with water over here. This is our best seller, super profitable. And uh, we have a lot, a lot of color. We have tons of colors, more than any, any company in the world actually. That's the latest trends, that's the latest fashion, and that's how we make money today. Antonio invited us to go to his mansion that you're in the process of yes, building. Yes, sir, absolutely, yeah, come on over. And then we'll uh, keep asking more great questions. Come so on over. come with us. Antonio has invited us to his home. We're gonna continue the conversation. We're here at uh, Palm Island, Palm Miami. Palm Island, Miami Beach, yes. Yeah, thank yes. you. We'll walk of course, come on right in. Welcome. to you. Thank come on you. in, guys. What were the biggest mistakes that you made early on in growing your business? How did you recover? What can you share Oh, with I us? made a lot of mistakes. At the beginning of the business, I really didn't understand what the flooring is too much because flooring has a lot of colors. People buy colors. Mm -hmm. They buy the cherries and the oaks and the, and the maples. 
So there's a lot of different colors. So I will just buy any kind of flooring and any kind of colors and it appeared that not everything sells. So I got stuck with a lot of inventory and a lot of money mm -hmm. that I have to lose money to get rid of it in order to recuperate some of my money. So the second one is hiring the wrong people. Mm -hmm. I did know that you need to hire people in the flooring industry so they'll understand that they can help you. So I hired the wrong people, then I've learned and I start hiring more people with more knowledge and more more professional people. Basically. So if you could go back right now in terms of ordering colors, what dip, what would you do different? Would you research more and not buy Absolutely. certain colors? Absolutely. Well, the experience that I have now is I know what not to buy. There's certain colors that I know for a fact that in Florida, for example, people will not buy. Give us an example. For what, example, what black flooring. Florida is very nautical. They like mm -hmm. the whites and the grays the and the maples. So now I have a lot more experience to know what to buy, what not to buy. How do I gain that experience? Is it just market knowledge and experience market over time? Market knowledge or? and, and just just time and mileage. I mean, you're mm -hmm. gonna have to have a little bit of experience to see what customers keep telling you, I don't want it and I don't want it and I don't want it. Then you figure out why they don't want it. It's because the, the demographic of the colors is not allowing for you to, to, to buy this Move all the product. To, exactly. We did it. We in? Oh, we're live, okay. Hey Upflip, it's me, Brandon, and for those who don't know me, I'm CEO of Wise Coatings, a garage floor coatings company that scaled from zero to $500,000 a month in less than 18 months, and I'm taking over this video because I'm being told that Upflip is interviewing the so-called floor coating king, and I've never even heard of the guy. And with my Upflip video, <clears throat> getting nearly 600,000 views in just two months, I don't think Upflip needs another floor coating king, if you know what Brandon, I mean. Brandon, yeah. He's not the floor coating king. He's the flooring king. Flooring king. Flooring king. You sure? It says here he's the king of laminate. Oh, well then, uh, it's a bit awkward. But since I have your attention, if you've ever wanted to start your own flooring business or transform your current business into something like this, a Wise Coatings franchise might be exactly what you're looking for. I opened this invitation to the Upflip viewers of my video, uh -huh. and since then we've had several Upflip viewers just like you start their own Wise Coatings business. We help you run your marketing and make your phone ring, set up all your backend systems and automations, and help you hire and train great employees. It's almost like a business in a box where you're guided to success every step of the way. And starting today, as an Upflip viewer, you can take advantage of an exclusively discounted franchise fee. Just click the link in the description and apply to become a Wise Coatings partner. Yeah, okay. Now, I know what we could do. If we just disconnect this wire, Upflip won't even know that we were here. So you sell mainly flooring made in the US and Europe. What are the advantages and more importantly, what are the disadvantages of possibly going there? A lot of advantages and a lot of disadvantages. So if you buy product from China, it's obviously that you're gonna get the material way, way, way inexpensive than you buy material in America. Mm -hmm. The product is way cheaper. Quality control is not the same. It's not there. We cannot sell flooring to people, promise them that the quality they're getting is the best while you're getting material from China. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is the material made in the USA and made in Europe is a bit more expensive, but it has a lot more value to our customers. No one complains. Customers are happy they're coming back to you again it's good for everyone so it's good for everyone <laughs> so i will say that the disadvantage is the price but the advantage is the happy customer and i'll go for the happy customer mm -hmm. i just opened a flooring business and i want to know what is the best way to attract new customers get them through the door how do i get somebody to walk in and buy all that i will say a major website is the good beginning then of course social media instagram facebook some google ads <laughs> craigslist then from the website you start doing some legwork and start visiting builders, interior designers, contractors. You need to spread the word. It takes a couple of years to, to start to get, running once you start walking. To get the wheel rolling. Absolutely. Hmm. All right. Antonio, you've got a beautiful showroom. I want to show our audience a little bit about your showroom, how you set it up. Is there any secrets to setting up a showroom for there success? Is, there is. There is okay. a flow over here. So right. as Walk soon as you it. come in, as soon as you come in, we're displaying our heavy material, which is tile, tile. porcelain, and marble. We got have it. it right here, all the colors in the world. We have them here. And then as you walk in, we want to have a specific flow. Most people come here for their waterproof material. Here is vinyl flooring, 100% waterproof. We have almost 430 different colors in stock, which is the largest inventory colors in the world. 430 colors. You cannot walk to any flooring store in the world and find what we have right here. So there's no way a customer will wow. walk here and not buy anything unless they're not a buyer. <laughs> 
Well, you can't fit 430 colors here. No, we have a lot so, more in the back, so we don't display them all, not to overwhelm our people. What about booklets? So how, how do I we see the... So basically, we show these to people. If they don't find what they like over here, then right. we start bringing samples from the warehouse. Gotcha. We just don't want to overwhelm them. Sometimes less is more. Yes. Systems tools to generate leads. Is that, is that a, a thing for the flooring business, or at least for you? Not really, no. We, we have our own ways to generate leads through social media. We have millions of people following us on, on but, social media. But they call you, right? Like, they call. There's no Typically, CRM. They pop in your CRM, no, then you follow up, no, and nurture it. No, okay. no, they call us and word to mouth. You know, after so many years being in business, word to mouth is our main business. So mm -hmm. if you're happy as a customer, you tell 10 other people. Flooring is, is the industry that if your house looks good, the wife is happy, the kids are safe, and you really like what it is, you're gonna talk to everybody in your neighborhood and let them know that there's a flooring company that deliver what they promise. So when people are really happy, they will come back. So it's marketing, and that marketing then takes them to pick up the phone and call you Correct. direct. That's, that's essentially that's how it happens. That's essentially what happens, exactly. Got it, okay. Exactly. Talk to us about your customer service process. So I reach out to you, what, over the phone, via email, online, I'm guessing, all, all the avenues out there. And by the time it gets delivered to my home, what does the process look like? What is the time frame between the two? And anything else you want to touch on? Typically, we get a phone call. So we advertise for millions of dollars every year in different platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of followers on social media as well. So we get a lot of traffic, probably 150 to 200 phone calls a day. Wow. Customers will call us, curious about colors, curious about locations, curious about the product. We invite them to our showroom and we also give them the price right on the phone before they come so they will know what they're up against. You need a thousand square feet of flooring. It's going to cost you $2,000 before you come seeing us. Then we'll work the detail over here. Right there and there, they're coming because they've been told five and six and seven thousand dollars somewhere else. So we got the customer to show up. When they show up over here, my sales team show them everything we have in stock, give them the right directions to what's the process gonna be next. You pick a color, we send our subcontractors that we work with the next day to your house. They install your house in one day. And that's the process. But you're purely sales, right? You don't get involved with the dirty work of the install. No, we There's... only do sales. We then work with almost 100 subcontractors that we qualify before we send it to people's house because right. my name and my reputation is on the line. My reputation is more important to me than the money and I make sure it's 100% correct. So confidence is key in sales. How do you develop that if you aren't as confident in the beginning of, of your career per se? Books, seminars, people like yourself, what can you share with our audience in terms of building that confidence in sales. Confidence comes later on. First, you have to have the knowledge. If you want to be successful in the flooring business, you first have to go work for another flooring store. You have to see all the falls. You have to see all the ups and downs. You have to see all the challenges. You have to see all the problems that they have in order for you to start building some kind of a platform of confidence. You can't just come in and say, I'm confident and I'm going to go in That's and tough. I'm going to start making sales. Yeah. You can't just talk out of no knowledge. What would you describe your leadership style as and what's effective, important in this particular industry? Super military. So my background is 100% military. I've been in Israeli military for six years. I fought in two wars. Oh, wow. So I experienced a lot, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of emotional. I so I definitely brought that into the world of business. Mm -hmm. I can definitely say that I ran my business in the highest level of military. Um, tolerance. On the bottom line is to run a business as an entrepreneur, you have to run it like it's all, almost like you're running a, a, a military combat. The days of making a lot of money are over. You have to be super tolerant and you have to be super in control of your business. Hmm. Otherwise, you're going to go out of business within minutes. Guys, make sure you also check out episode 44 on our podcast where we interview Brandon Vaughn, the owner of Weiss Coatings, how he started an epoxy floor business that generates more than $450,000 a month. You'd be amazed on what he has to share. Check it out. What are the profit margins on the vinyl if it's the most profitable? Are we talking 50 plus, 60? Typically, 50% discount is what, uh, is what we give the customer, which is 100% profit to us. So wow. we typically make wow. um, almost 100% on a sale. But again, it depends on the buying power. Yes. Is my buying power is allowed me to make 100% profit on it. Typically, a Home Depot or a Lowe's make very little on it because mm. their buying power Although it's big, but it's not with the resources that we have. Yes. Well, we have different resources worldwide to buy better than Home Depot and Lowe's, actually. So if you could buy a tremendous amount of volume and inventory, then it gives you the opportunity to give me a better price exactly. and still exactly. make 100% profit. Exactly. We pass the discounts to our customers. We buy big quantities. 
thousands of containers worldwide every year. And that's what we do is we pass the discount to our customers and that's where no one can compete with us for the last 20 years. All right, a little bit of fun with Antonio. We love Blitz and thank you guys for submitting your questions. We'll start with Wild King. He's asking what amount of capital does the business require? Approximately $100,000. So in order to operate a business, you need about $100,000 for advertising, for rents, for employees, for payrolls. Uh, Alfonso is wondering, how can I get distributors of different models and brands of flooring? You can go to flooring shows. There are flooring shows once here in Las Vegas. There's flooring shows in Europe. You can go and see all the models, all the distributors, and they will help. And connect with them? Connect with them. Gotcha. Addy B is asking, where did you get your flooring from? I get my flooring from Europe, the majority in Europe. 90% of our material is made in the USA, so you can get it right here in this country. You can shop around for manufacturing. You can find anything you want in this country. Boom, and last one from Wing Daddy is asking, how do you think business will be in a recession with a surplus of inventory in the market and lowering prices? The flooring industry is a bulletproof, is a recession proof, and I have all the confidence mm -hmm. in the business that we're never, ever, ever gonna close. Awesome. We touched on it a little bit, but what do you look for in employees that you really are passionate to hire? What are some key traits that stand out? If I walk through your office, what, what pops at you? I will say experience. I will say I need you to come pretty much from the flooring industry. I need you right. to understand the product. I need you to understand the language, uh, their sizes, their square feet, their colors. There's a lot over here that um, involve of just coming to be hired by us. Mm -hmm. So you need to be knowledgeable. You need to be friendly. You need to have the right attitude. You need to be positive. And you need to be a team player, which is the most important thing for me. Kind of like a basketball team. There you go. Tell me about what's going on here, because we were down there, and that was, in my guess, just inventory. Correct. Uh, share with us, what are we looking at here? So we are looking here is 150 or maybe 200 homes that we're about to do installation. We do a few hundred homes every month, installation, customers that physically came over here, bought the material, picked the color, and now we're sending our subcontractor to install all this house. So each one of these pilots that you see, mm -hmm. 500 square feet, 1,000 square feet, 3,000 square feet, this and is about a million dollars that we're about to do in the next two or three weeks installation for people's home, yeah. Now, when you got started, obviously you needed to build brand awareness. Nobody knew the Flooring King or, I wanna know what really kind of propelled you forward. Was it a certain marketing approach that you uh, implemented? Was it, somebody else coming in and really giving you a boost. Share with us sort of the evolution of starting from here and ending up, you know, at 150 first, plus million. The first 10 years was just mm -hmm. running a flooring business with one big warehouse, doing good volume of business, mm -hmm. doing okay money. We made money. 12 to 13 years into the business, CNBC called me one morning, told me that they have a show called Blue Collar Millionaire. They want to feature me on the show because they were watching of what I'm doing. I did a lot of charities, a lot of Habitat for Humanity helps, a lot of first responder helps. They find me very interesting and unique. You made yourself stand out. Yeah. So so the guys came and they filmed me for four days. And from there, to be honest with you, it was aired for almost 80 million people worldwide. Wow. It's still airing today. I still get phone calls worldwide from people. Wow. I want to be like you. Teach me how to make money. Teach me how to run a business. After CNBC, Bloomberg TV called me and they said, we have a show called The American Dream. Mm -hmm. And they want to feature me in their show. And I was again super surprised. So between these two shows, Florent Key was featured to close to 150 million people worldwide. Wow. <clears throat> So all of a sudden from being a guy that's self flooring and doing well, I became a famous flooring guy that's doing well. And now I, I consider to be the superstar of the flooring industry worldwide. Not because I'm that big, it's because we're just famous. And yeah. What I see is you doing everything up to a certain point and doing everything right until someone notices you that then gives you a skyrocket very up, true, right? Very like, true, but to be noticed, you, have to, you also have to do something right. Yeah. So again, Habitat for Humanity worldwide is building houses for people with no money, people after disasters like hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes. Mm -hmm. We come in, we build a house, we do the flooring, we do all this for free with volunteers. And that's what attracts the network to me, mm -hmm. is to see a guy that really authentically giving money for free to people worldwide and that's the part that they kind of like, is not only the money you're making, is the, what are you giving back? That's awesome, it's a good place to be. Yes, sir, it is. So when it comes to equipment, what do you need to operate a flooring business, specifically in a warehouse? You're gonna have to have a couple of these forklifts. This is what's basically lifting the pallets off the trucks to the warehouse, and then you just, Schlep them around in the warehouse with the forklift. So you're gonna have to have a couple of these forklifts. You're also gonna need to have a warehouse with the dock high. That oh, mean yeah. 
trucks needs to be able to reverse to mm -hmm. the warehouse so you can take them in and out but definitely uh, certified operators with this forklift and this is probably the most important machine of the whole inventory there's the whole. really no other tools or equipment you need nothing right? only the forklift. yeah okay. this thing you need a few of them uh, in order to operate a warehouse now you're an expert i was going to try to ride one but i found out today you have to be certified to actually do this safely so thanks for I pointing that expert, out of course. You, yeah you are of an course, expert of course Antonio, I was prepping for the interview yesterday. I was like, I'm Googling, YouTubing Antonio uh, Sestiel, and then I come across this crazy video. I mean, look at this. Is this, is this you? The boat, of course. So boating is part of my life. Look Everybody that, that knows me knows I'm a speed junkie. I love speed. I was racing boats for a few years. When I retired from the perfume business, I basically got into the boating business and we did go fast boats and Jeez. this is part of my life. Till How today, fast are you going? That's 150 miles an hour right here in Miami Beach. About 150? 150 miles wow. an hour with a, with a go fast and it's still a passion, a big passion of my life. I love speed. What's your specific plan when it comes to expanding to 350 locations? We have scouters right now. I have a mm -hmm. few real estate agents nationwide that's scouting for locations. Mm -hmm. So we're looking mm -hmm. for a inexpensive locations nationwide. And once we find the locations, we're gonna open them as we go and then start looking for people to hire. Are you looking for location for a storefront or, or warehouse distribution plus storefront? Yeah, we're what looking kind of for locations setup? for storefront and warehouse distribution. So All every state, no, every state is going to have a a few stores and a warehouse every 250 miles to support the stores around in a radius. So you're Got gonna it. have 20 stores with a warehouse and 30 stores in a warehouse and 50 stores in a warehouse. Always gonna be a distribution center that can supply these stores with materials. Got it, so you're utilizing real estate agents, local people to find you locations after which if it's identified, correct, makes sense to you. Correct. You either buy it, lease it. It has to have an option to buy because if the, okay. if the locations turn to be successful, I don't want to be depending on a landlord yeah. that tell us, well, that's the end of this transaction and then someone else can take that's over. That's a good point. So we tell the lenders in advance, this is Flooring King, it's a worldwide business, we're going big, we're going bigger than Home Depot. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to buy this location and if they tell us no, we pass and we move to the next location. I like it, keep it yeah. up. Cut and dry. Keep the lenders on their toes. <laughs> for somebody like me, for example, I want to start a flooring business. I don't have a lot of money. Are there financing options out there for me to start a flooring business? How would you do it? Honestly, I want to get your opinion. How would I you do it? I would say to start in a flooring business, you first have to work in a flooring store. Yeah. You have to see how the movement is. And I want to say that the false information that you can start a business with no money is a lie. You cannot start any business, not only flooring, with less, with a little bit capital. You, you can cannot, or can? You cannot. Mm -hmm. You cannot go and start borrowing money from banks and from institutions and fill up your warehouses and your showrooms with debts before you even have sales. You don't know what your sales. You can control your expense, you don't control your income. It's very difficult to get to any business unless you have a little bit help from the beginning. And to go get finance from a bank, from credit cards, or from friends and family and start promising them that one day when you do well, you're gonna pay them back. I say it's a disaster. That's not your you point. have to somehow get a partner with money, work for a flooring store that in some point will get you maybe to a different level and maybe give you in-house financing, but to start a business and to start the flooring business specifically, because containers of flooring are very, very expensive. Unless you have a little bit of money on the side, mm -hmm. you can never do it. To start from negative and believe that you're gonna be positive without knowing the vision of what you're gonna have, I think it's a disaster. What's the biggest change that you have seen in the flooring industry since you started? I mean, we're talking a 20 year period, right? Yeah, I saw a lot of changes actually. Actually, materials is what I would say that the biggest change the biggest? was. Oh, yeah, the whole world was doing hardwood. About 15 years ago, we stopped cutting wood in the worldwide. So there's no more cutting of wood, very limited supply. Mm -hmm. That turns into moving to the next level, which is laminate flooring. So then we ran with laminate flooring for almost 15 years. And now we're seeing the vinyl flooring, which is the recycled plastic. So we saw it from hardwood, to laminate, to vinyl, and it's a big change because you have to change the colors and the inventory and the infrastructure of your websites and everything. Huge change. In terms of sales or the delivery of the product, has that changed also? Absolutely. So at the beginning, we're all in shock because it was a supply chain issue. Later on, we start seeing larger quantities of laminate flowing showed up, but the price was higher. Mm -hmm. And we don't do a lot of business with China. So in order for us to get what we needed, we have to buy it here in the US or in Europe. So we have to pay a little bit more in order to get the product. 
Antonio, what's one daily habit that's allowed you to achieve the success in your business today? You have to wake up super early in the morning. You have to be super positive. As soon as you open your eyes, you have to remember this is a new day. Yesterday's challenges are gone. Today's a new day, new beginning, new challenges, and also new dreams. So mm. something you didn't do yesterday, go ahead and go get them today. Super positive. Don't listen to anybody around you. It's a fresh day. Go get them. That's pretty cool. What is the secret, Antonio, to 100% customer satisfaction? Say what you do, do what you say. The problem starts later on when you start over-promising, under-delivering, or just not delivering what you promised. And then you're gonna start having doubts. You're gonna start people talk around the street that what you say is really not true. Yes. That's how you're going out of business. That's if it. you wanna be in business, you have to tell people, hey, I'm gonna deliver this, and you're gonna deliver it 100%. If you do that, you're in business. Amen. Well, this has been incredible. I'm inspired. I know that a lot of our viewers are feeling the same. Thank you so much. In conclusion. Yes, sir. Uh, for those that want to get into the flooring business, what last pieces of advice can you share with us? A very simple, stay hungry for success. Keep in mind that the flooring industry is in impacting people's lives. So when you install flooring in their homes, you literally, they're gonna walk on it for the next 20 years. Make sure that when you deliver a message or you deliver a price or a product, be for real, make sure that you have good energy delivering the material to them and the rest is gonna fall into place. And don't drink and do drugs. Hey, That'll go a long way. Don't drink and do drugs is in my case, but I will suggest you to be focused. And if you wanna be focused, drinking drugs is not gonna cut it. I like that. Yes, sir. Thank you. My Antonio. pleasure. Thank you for having me on your show. Pleasure I appreciate ours. it. Thank you so much. Well, that's a wrap with the king of flooring, Antonio Sustiel. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this episode. Execute on everything we talk about. We wish you all the success. And thank you for taking a second to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. Take care.